Hello and welcome to the LLG vlog. I'm Helen McGrath, LLG's Executive Director of Policy and Governance, and I'm joined this week by Dennis Hall, our Bulletin Editor. Hello, Dennis. Hello, Helen. Busy week as ever, I say it every week. Yeah. So what have you picked for us to discuss, Dennis? Well, I thought we'd take a look at the uh, the new Committee on Standards Chair's latest blog, uh, which is about accountability and the post office scandal. And it resonates with key issues that potentially we face in our sector. Bringing in a new IT system to modernize a seriously outdated system is never as straightforward as one hopes, don't we know it? But the catastrophic impact of the Horizon system at the post office and the subsequent handling of the problems asks major questions about the standards of public sector and corporate conduct. Horizon was a black box system, to put it simply, and developed by a global company purchased by a statutory corporation overseen by a board accountable to a government department run by civil servants and led by ministers, who are all then accountable to Parliament. So what possibly could go wrong? These layers of responsibility and accountability are common in public life. Modern government in a globalised world is highly complex. <clears throat> now, what does this imply for our sector about how we handle accountability? About how councils purchase huge corporate IT systems? And what about accountability procurement? Is anyone really accountable in all of this? And are our immediate instincts to defend our organisations? And what about this issue that's been raised about poor past performance of contractors in the public sector? Is it really ve relevant in these situations? Over to you, Helen. <clears throat> well, there's quite a lot of material there, Dennis. Um, I think I think what's interesting, I don't know if you've uh, looked at it, the Committee on Standards in Public Life, the, the new chair, Doug Chalmers, he, he's written a, a first blog um, sort of looking at the wider angle on the post of a scandal behind the organisation and it's looking at culture and leadership and links to accountability and obviously if we go back in time in, in 2013 <clears throat> the government clarified the Nolan principles um, as applying to all those who deliver services on behalf of the taxpayer and that meant that anyone taking decisions or providing services using public funds must live up to them and he reminds everybody, Mr Chalmers, that the committee's reports, which were in 2014 and 2018 on ethical standards, commented at the time on the lack of consistent structures or arrangements in place to actively promote the right culture or behaviours. And I think it's important to actually listen to what he says here, because he says that organisational policies and schemes alone are not enough, creating a speak up culture requires leaders to listen with curiosity and appreciation. And that's really um, key, I think. And he goes on to take action where appropriate and to provide mm. feedback mm. on the outcome. Leadership in this area requires a proactive approach, creating a range of informal and formal opportunities to listen to employees and an ongoing commitment to building a culture where people are encouraged to speak up and are comfortable doing so. So, you know, he... I mean, in a nutshell there, we, we know, don't we, that that's how we've got to um, address behaviour and culture within uh, mm. public life and in local authorities. But, you know, how do we move to a position where that's actually taking place and is the expected standard? Because it seems to me that trying to drive people towards accepting and listening and taking action, that's that's the hard thing here. So... What happened at the post office, you know, really begs questions about their culture and relationships. And it, and indeed, if you look at public interest reports, if you look at um, interventions, this is what we're seeing time and time again. Culture, culture, culture. And as you know, I've been watching all these post office inquiry hearings on TV and I find them totally absorbing. But, yeah. you know, Helen, this piece by Doug Chalmers raises lots of issues around accountability in the procurement of major IT systems, which I know that, that they're going to examine this in the inquiry. And I've asked myself the question in preparing for this piece, how can there be true accountability of service providers when there's such a huge inequality in terms of bargaining power with local yeah. authorities? What can they do in that situation? Can there be indeed real accountability? 
legal or otherwise, and I'll come on to that in a moment. No, I don't want to name names either about those that local authorities deal with, but we all know who the big service providers are. It's yeah. a polarised market. Councils are heavily reliant on just a few large companies. So when contracts are due for renewal, for example, it's hard to resist keeping on with the same companies. After all, it's the, it's the devil you know. So again, and I keep repeating myself in my own mind, is it realistic to bring these massive IT companies to account or do we have to rely on what Fujitsu, who I'm happy to name, have talked about a moral commitment to provide recompense? Is it just a moral commitment? Are there no legal obligations given the raft of uh, complex contracts that undoubtedly will be in place yeah. between the post office and Fujitsu? But have we come at the end of all of this just to a moral obligation with all of this in place. Is it simply a matter, uh, I wonder, of whether these systems are too big and complex to procure effectively? Can a single local authority dealing with a company like Fujitsu ever achieve a proper parity of bargaining power? Now, local authorities collectively combine in bodies known as central purchasing organizations to deal with multi-authority procurements. They may provide some assurance and protection through strength of numbers, uh, to avoid the kind of situation that avoided uh, that uh, occurred with Fujitsu. But having said that, the post office is a massive statutory corporation anyway. And does the problem lie with accountability with the size of the contracts, their length, the relationships that develop within them, that in effect make them uh, enmesh with the local authorities that they're dealing with so that they can't extricate themselves from them? So are the contracts the issues in, in that sense? Can legal accountability be properly achieved with these uh, multinational providers? So these are all of the issues that are occupy, uh, occupying my mind at the moment with all of this, Helen. Well, uh, I mean, I, I think you've made a, a really important point that trying to extricate from a contractual um, relationship. And you see it, don't you, in um, in particular in residential care homes, for example, where you're contracted and, you know, how do you bring that contract to an end because in, in relation to the fact of what will you do with the people that are in, in that care home if there's mm. been service failures? But in Fujitsu's case, uh, you know, the relationship between central government and Fujitsu is a, is a well, it's an interesting one. Let's be diplomatic. Yes. Because they've been awarded billions of pounds of contracts, haven't they? Despite reports, um, I think it was reported in the Financial Times that they've been um, quite aggressive and sometimes hostile bidder um, with a track record of, of major systems issues across Whitehall. So, you know, how does that sit with the law in relation to um, procurement? And I'm no expert. I always leave that to Kieran <laughs> McGarhy, but I know that you certainly in practice um, dealt quite a lot with procurement issues. But I think that there must surely be some provision around uh, past past failures in, rela in relation to future awards, Dennis. Well, you're absolutely right, Helen. It's interesting you mentioned care homes. I, I did used to be involved in uh, procurement as a commercial lawyer and IT contracts and uh, dealing with healthcare provide, uh, care homes and where things went wrong. Uh, in the latter case, you couldn't bring the contracts to an end. It was all in, in effect being practical about it. You can't decant people who are in care homes you know, uh, as part of bringing a, a contract to an end. You had to look at the terms to see whether particular problems could be remediated within the terms of those contracts. And uh, similarly, people dealing with IT contracts are in a similar position. Uh, but of course, there are uh, rules and regulations, the latest being uh, Procurement Policy Note 4 of 2015, which sets, that, sets out the current government policy to ensure bidder's past performance is taken into account uh, in terms of those contracts which are in scope, which is usually the very large contracts. Uh, and there are arrangements which provide that in-scope organisations are required as a matter of policy to establish selection criteria within the tender process uh, relating to a supplier's reliability as demonstrated by its, uh, the performance of its past contracts. And organisations, local authorities, have to satisfy themselves that suppliers' principal relevant contracts in the last three years, those are the words, are being or have been satisfactorily performed in accordance with ter their terms. And where there is evidence that this has not occurred in any such case, uh, the company must state the reasons for those failures and assure the uh, local authorities that are tendering, uh, that are doing the tender exercise, that those failures will not recur. 
if the contract is awarded. It is clear, Helen, that central government is committed to improving the performance of supplies in the public sector. And this is evident in how the Procurement Act of 2023 will work, because it includes a requirement uh, for a contracting authority to set out and publish a minimum of three performance indicators that the tender must be demonstrated to have complied with. So that's a new step forward. Uh, I think it will make a change, and it may well make a change in the situation that the post office found itself with with Fujitsu. Yeah, well, let's let's see. Let's hope so. But a little bit of black and white letter law there for us. Yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> Which is always welcome, I'm sure, for practitioners. Yeah. So, um, well, thank you for chatting to me today. Um, if listeners can get more information in the bulletin and our Grapevine podcast throughout the year. But on that note, it's goodbye from me. And from me too. <laughs>